The Goat House is back with my favorite picks and locks for NFL Week 11. Got a lot of good picks I like this week. Got a parlay and a teaser in this episode for you guys. And of course, our college football pick that we're on a roll on. But let's take a look at what I got for Week 11. The best picks against the spread for Week 11, starting with the Lions, a large line of 13. Lions minus 13, but I love it for several reasons. Not just the Lions are way better than the Jags. The Jags are starting Mac Jones. They had no offense besides one drive last week. And that one drive, they're running the ball very well. They're not going to be able to run the ball well in the Lions. They have probably the best run defense in football. The Lions could not play their game last week. They still won, but the offensive line didn't play their game. Jared Goff certainly didn't play his game. The running game didn't get going until the very end. The pass defense was pretty bad in the first half. So they're probably salty about not playing their brand of football, and they're going to be able to do that and some against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Lions match up. You know, Jared Goff, look at his career. Matches up way better versus man than zone. Amon St. Brown is one of the best receivers in the NFL against man. The Jags run the most, most man in football. This should be an absolute beatdown. I don't expect the Jags to score nearly enough to keep up anything near the Lions while the Lions should hit 30-plus points. And I like the Rams minus 4.5. Yeah, a lot of people are predicting them to stay close with the Patriots. It could stay close. The Patriots defense playing well. They did play the Bears last week. And Drake may start to heat up, but... I'll tell you what's heating up. The Rams defense is full of young players. They're finally really getting going, led by Jared Verse, but a number of players here. So that defense should hold the Patriots to limited points, and the Rams offense can move the ball. They're very explosive. They can move the ball. They had a couple offensive linemen back last week, so they were a little sloppy, some issues with the snaps, and Stafford was a little off. Then they get back on track this week. They went by at least a touchdown. So those are my favorite spread picks this week, and I do predict one a spread, and a score for every single game in that recent video uh, that is on the channel. The straight-up locks been doing pretty good on these, I, as we should. There's four of them here for this week. The Lions definitely should beat the Jags big, not only win, but Texans going against Cooper Rush and the Cowboys. They're going to run all over them, so they'll win that game. I'll take the Vikings over the Titans as well. I know the Vikings, as a Vikings fan, I know they could be sketchy. You know, They can blow it to just about anybody. They almost did to the Jags last week. Uh, so they could do it to the Titans. I just don't see how Will Levis can perform against this Brian Flores defense. It's a confusing defense for inexperienced quarterbacks. It'll take the ball away from you. Going against Will Levis, I, I don't see how they will score enough points. Like, they might not score a touchdown in this game. So, you know, the Vikings and the Dolphins are starting to get going. And they really played well against the Cardinals and the Bills before the Rams last week. And now it's a much easier opponent in the Raiders. The way to beat the Dolphins is on the ground. The Raiders are the worst on the ground in football. So I don't see how the Raiders could beat the Dolphins. Love those four. Myself and a couple other guys make a pick for every single NFL game. It's on our weekly pick show. That's what the thumbnail looks like. You can check it out. It's on the it's on the channel. Don't forget to subscribe and turn notifications on. Loads of content here. Not just the weekly picks and everything. Well, we got a mock draft that recently up. We're going to start doing playoff predictions, coaching candidates on the way. A lot here, so join us. Be much appreciated. My favorite total lock. It's an under. Under 44 and a half of the total between the Browns and the Saints. I'm trying to figure out why they set it that high. I do not see that going over that. The Browns, people forget, they play really, really solid defense. Even though they're bad, they play teams tough sometimes because of that defense, not so much their offense. And the Saints on offense, it's pretty much Kamara. I don't expect MVS to be doing what he did last week. They don't have Alave. They don't have Shahid. Browns defense should hold them to limited points. And you look at the opposite side, Saints play pretty solid on defense. They're struggling a little bit against the run recently, so I think Nick Chubb gets going, but a lot of running clock. We know the Browns aren't going to score a ton. We know Jameis Winston's not going to just dominate the Saints. They're probably going to limit how much he throws. This game should stay under. There's quite a few games that I'm leaning with. This one is the one I absolutely love here this week between what should be a defensive game, the Browns and the Saints. I got a teaser that I love, and I got a parlay that I love for this week. Last second picks and more picks on our Twitter, of course. Link pinned in the comments. Make sure you follow that. But the teaser, you drop the Dolphins down to minus one and a half. They're going to handle business there against the Raiders. There's a chance it's close. They're going to win that football game, though. And the Lions, if you drop that down to minus six and a half, I think they even cover the 13. They should dominate this game by at least a touchdown, at least. Colts starting Anthony Richardson. Some people are a little scared about that. I think it's better going against the Jets, and that's why they are starting him because the Jets struggle to stop the run. Specifically, they struggle to stop quarterbacks from running, and the Colts will have a plan for that with Jonathan Taylor and Anthony Richardson. I actually switched and have them winning the game. But there's a scenario where because the Colts have pretty predictable cover three defense where we're, 
Rodgers could have a solid day, right? He could have a solid day. So there's a chance they win by a little bit. Ten and a half is actually, even though it's a big spread, that's pretty decent odds in, in a teaser here. So uh, I feel really good about that with the Colts. And the Chiefs, that's a 50-50 game, but no one is going to beat the shit out of either team there. That game is going to stay close. There's no way the Chiefs get dominated, right? There's no way the way their defense is playing in Mahomes and on third downs and clutch situations is going to keep that game close. I think it's going to be actually lower scoring than people think. A lot of defense. It's going to stay under 7.5 there. So the Chiefs, 7.5. So you pair those together, which all look very, very, very realistic. Plus 240 looks pretty good. In a parlay, just take a few teams, the money line. There's got to be one in there that's a little bit of a risk. I'm going to go with the Browns. My gut is telling me the Browns, but my matchup is the matchup is telling me the Browns as well. Saints beat a division rival at home last week. That happens sometimes. MVS went off early. They played the weak Falcons defense. The Browns defense is actually a lot better than the Falcons. They're not going to let, not going to let MVS go off. They're going to slow Kamara down. They're not going to stop him. They're going to slow him down. There's no Olave, no Shahid. The Saints are really struggling to stop the run lately. Nick Chubb will get going in this game. The way the Browns lose this game is if they pass too much and Winston turns it over too much, which is possible. I think the Browns will be smart off the bye. They'll pound the football. So that is the risky one of the group here because we're only going three picks and it's just straight out win. Take the Rams over the Patriots. We'll take the Vikings over the Titans. I think both those teams' defenses alone could win the game. Then you factor in they both have explosive offenses. It should be enough there. Uh, you know, it's just the only thing that's stopping these three teams from winning is just too many turnovers, right? The Vikings won with those turnovers last week, and they're playing the Titans this week. So this be this can't have too many turnovers and they'll win. Browns run the ball, they'll win. Rams play their game. They're much better than the Patriots. I think actually on both sides of the ball now, play their game there. So I like both those picks there. Uh, you know, I also consider if you want like a, instead of doing two, you want one big teaser, you take that teaser I have up there and then you add Browns plus three and a half, add Browns plus three and a half on top of that teaser I had up there and you're, you're getting plus, uh, you know, almost like plus 500 odds somewhere around there. So that is also an option I thought I would mention as well. So these have been a lot of fun this year, but feel really good about this week. Man, I love these touchdown picks this week. Any My favorite anytime touchdown picks. Christian McCaffrey didn't score last week, even though he was pretty productive, especially catching the ball. He's going to score against the Seahawks this week. The last time they, the two teams played, Jordan Mason ran all over the Seahawks. Garendo ran all over the Seahawks. McCaffrey's going to find that end zone. Derrick Henry, the best bet for the Ravens to beat the Steelers, is running the football to Henry. They're always focused on containing Lamar Jackson. Henry should score. Joe Mixon's going to score on Monday Night Football. Pretty confident about that. You just got to wait until Monday Night Football. And then two that have a little bit better odds. They're actually both plus 100 right now, but I like them so much I put them in this category. Nick Chubb. Saints are struggling to stop the run recently. The Browns know they have to run the ball to win this game. More, you know They have to run more than passing. Chubb should punch one in. And Amandra St. Brown, I like the matchup. that The Lions are going to score a bunch of times. They're not going to let off the gas. All, a bunch of their talented players are going to score. St. Brown is going to start heating up. And he matches up very well against the man coverage of the Jacks. He usually beats up man coverage. And the best plus options, really good odds here. Audric Estime, it seems like I, it's no guarantee, I suppose. But it really seems like he is taking over the as the lead back of the Broncos. We saw it last week. He had a couple flashes after the game. Sean Payton said you'll see the rookie get more involvement. And he was already the most involved running back last week. So good signs. Playing the Falcons defense, a weaker defense. They struggle to stop the run. Estimate's going to punch one in. Then Anthony Richardson. Remember, we had Kyler Murray on here last week going against that Jets defense who for some reason struggles to stop running quarterbacks. And Kyler Murray scored twice. The Colts put Anthony Richardson in for a reason. They got a plan. I'm looking for Richardson to run one in here, and he's got to be playing pissed off. I think he's going to have a solid game, so I'm really feeling you know, the Colts in general, and Anthony, mainly Anthony Richardson here, bouncing back in this game. All the props, all the Thursday night uh, you know, bets as well. We went crazy last Thursday night. All that will be on X slash Twitter, at Godos NFL. There's a link pinned in the comments for that. And my college football pick of week 12, we're running it back with the Buffaloes. Colorado helped us last week against Texas Tech. They're, they're looking good. They're playing much better football. Since doing the college football pick in this video, we are 6-1. We are doing very well this year. The one time we lost, it's funny because the one time we lost the week before we won when I went Miami of Ohio, I wanted to go Miami of Ohio again, 
but I was close with Rutgers. I'm like, do I do the same team twice? If I would have, we'd be undefeated right now. We're going to go Colorado. That's my gut says Colorado's the best pick. I'm not going to be afraid to go with them two weeks in a row here. I like how they match up against Utah, and I do have more picks for our Twitter subscribers every week, plus a parlay working on that. Been doing pretty good this year, but uh, yeah, I like Colorado versus Utah this week for multiple reasons. Colorado's playing really good football right now. They got to cut it out with the penalties. They really got to cut it out with the penalties, but a little undisciplined, but much better team than Utah right now. Utah did play BYU tough. Some say that maybe they got screwed at the end of that game. Colorado is much more of an explosive offense than BYU, though, number one. Number two, Utah was down to their third quarterback last week because he was playing better. They benched Wilson, who was Zach Wilson's brother, their start of the year, second string quarterback. But the third guy is now injured out for the season. Wilson's back in. He really struggled. He got benched for a reason. So he's going against Colorado, who's playing better on defense. And Utah just cannot score enough points here to keep up. So I think Colorado rolls in this one. They're at home. It's an early slate game here. Everything kind of points towards Colorado. Last week, it was tough. To, it was tough. There wasn't a long list of games that I loved. This week, there's quite a few that I really like. So we have more picks for our, our Twitter subscribers there. But we're going to ride with the Buffaloes two weeks in a row as they start to heat up and make a push to win that Big 12 and get into the college football playoffs. So they're a pretty exciting team to watch. Love them or hate them. I know people were on both sides of that. Uh, they do have to cut it out with, with the uh, unsportsmanlike penalties. They're, they're, they would have won against a good Texas Tech team by even more last week if, uh, if they didn't have all those penalties that kind of kept Texas Tech hanging around in that game, sort of. But, uh, yeah, I'll see how they do with the Utah team, who, whose uh, season is not looking good due to the injuries that they've had. But that will wrap it up for the week 11 slash 12 for college football. Locks video. We're back every Thursday with this video. And check out all of our other content covering week 11. And we have some bonus stuff like mock drafts, working on a coaching candidates video. We had a recent trade. Trades to watch out for in the offseason. A lot of extra content here on the Goat House. So join us. We much appreciate it. It's going to do it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.